here, they're doing a good job. What they need is leadership down here, because I can tell you, if unless you're prepared to put the hard yards in, it ain't going to happen. That's what's missing. Simple right. as that. And we've addressed that, but Pam's also made the point that it's not just one person. The council is the, is the whole council. Can I just... Yes. OK. Um, I'm sort of jumping out of my skin like the gentleman was back here, and I'm going a bit nuts with it. Um, it's just all of these things everyone's talking about are just little jigsaws in the bigger picture. They're little, little bits of the puzzle. You know, there's the PIP charges, all the infrastructure charges, there's the land supply, there's the, in, there's the inefficient sparse sustainable time planning delays, act. There culture. is time delays, yeah. that causes the time delays, there's inefficient councils, there's a lack of leadership. Yeah. It just goes on and on and on. It is, we're not best practice in South East Queensland. It's not about the Gold Coast, it's about South East Queensland, it's about Brisbane, it's about Logan, it's about us all working together to create South East Queensland. We were the, we were the envy, talking about the envy, South East Queensland was the envy of Australia. No longer. I mean, Melbourne, everyone, everyone's going to Melbourne because right. Melbourne's the activity. Why? Their infrastructure charges are 18, 12 to 18,000. Ours are, you're talking like, we're talking like, what, what are we saying at the moment? 27,000? That's a joke. It's a, it, absolute rubbish. $27,000? Absurd. Absurd. It's not best practice. We've got a South East Queensland regional plan that's, that's, that's locking up land for, for environmental reasons. That's, that's a great concept, but half of the stuff, half of the land in the urban footprint hasn't got structure plans over it because local authorities aren't producing the structure plans to allow developers to actually lodge applications. We can't lodge an application without that. So that's the next, that's the next bit of the jigsaw puzzle. Um, there's been a lack of infrastructure for 20 years. Um, you know, we've been growing at the same rate for 20 years. It's not, like 30 years. It's not, it's not like brain surgery. It's, it's obvious. It's sitting there. The growth is there, but the lack of infrastructure. Where are the new roads? Where has been the investment? I know we're doing some now. We're catching up, but it hasn't been there. All right. So if you, you were going to say one thing that we should walk out, what's your solution? One solution to one of those issues. <laughs> oh, my God. It, as I said, there's eight bits of the puzzle and every one of them needs fixing. And all you've got to do is look at the fact that if you rewind 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, people sold from Sydney and Melbourne, they moved up here and they lived cheaper. Why did they live cheaper? Because we were doing best practices government. It wasn't just the local authorities. It was a state government who was a top-down approach that it was, the, it was the myriad of all those policies that made us affordable. Not only were you coming to Michael, a if I can climate, just cut in there, mate, if I can just cut in. I mean, the point of this morning is really to identify these solutions. solutions. We've and got to identify we, solutions. We're yep. at the pointy end, and yep. there's a couple of people who want to speak. Please put up your hand if you do, and we'll get a microphone. Uh, it, but it, a specific question or a specific solution would be fantastic. There's also a note on your tables, and it says suggestions feedback. If you have a suggestion of something that could be done, all of those will be collect collected. Credit yourself with the idea or do it anonymously as the first step in this. But just before I go to Bill, could I just go to, to Jeff? You had your hand up, Jeff. Um, I understand that the Gold Coast City Council balance sheet, uh, we've got debts of about 10% of our assets. So an LVR in banking terms, an LVR of 10%, which is a lazy balance sheet in anyone's terms. Now, Treasurer, I know Gold Coast City Council, if they need to borrow, they've got to go through Queensland Investment Corporation or there are some sort of rating issues there. But part of the Gold Coast, you know, one, once again, we've got to learn by history. The Gold Coast grew in the past by borrowing to upfront, to infill or to mm. put in infrastructure up front and then have that repaid over time. The pendulum seems to have swung where we want to put the, get the public or the developers to pay for infrastructure first. I would like to see the council, if they really wanted to build this essential infrastructure we have today, rather than wait for the developers to fund it for the future, is to borrow, is to use their lazy balance sheet. And I don't know if Treasurer, if, uh, if we are permitted, but maybe that's just a wish list. Treasurer, do you want to briefly respond to that? Sure, ultimately uh, that's a decision that councils can make. Eddie is probably um, better positioned uh, as the Chair of Finance for Gold Coast City Council to make a broader comment, but there's no prohibition uh, on uh, local councils utilising their balance sheet. Um, I've got a cabinet meeting to, to go to, so I have to duck off in a moment, but I did want to just make one point, if I might, and that is I think the challenge here on the Gold Coast um, does have some unique aspects to it. It also isn't very different to what's occurring in many other parts of the state. 
the nation and indeed the world. I think one of the real tricks here in the Gold Coast is there's a reason that everyone's here and that is they care about the place. There's a reason mm. that everyone lives here and that is it's a fantastic mm. place to live. I've never seen a football team win a match on Sunday by spending the whole week talking themselves down, telling everyone what's wrong with them, mm. complaining about the coach and complaining about the captain. I've only ever seen football teams win when they actually start pulling in one direction and know what they've got to do on the weekend. I think that's a very, uh, a very good point. Thank you. And thank you very much for your time, Treasure. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Uh, and, and Madonna, just in relation to what the, uh, the Treasure was saying, our debt ratio is uh, very healthy. Our debt ratio at the moment is about 6%. The guidelines that are set by the government is uh, up to 20%. So there is room so is to do that. So is there an argument to there, borrow There is room to borrow, but there, ha there has to be justification to take up those loans for that infrastructure right. if, if the community can also support that. All right, so can we have a couple of, uh, of quick comments or questions, and then I would love uh, if we could just maybe very briefly, we've probably got 10 minutes more, to involve as many of our local councillors as we can to try and draw up those five or six things that we would like council out of today to come back and report to the UDIA uh, about. And so, Bill, briefly. Yeah, is this working? Oh, good. Yeah, I'd like to commend uh, Mayor Pasali and Mayor Pam for having such a high degree of common sense and commerce. Uh, I have a relative very close to me that's uh, doing a subdivision. Uh, he's 42 years of age now. When he was 40, he rang and said, Bill, um, I'm not celebrating my birthday. I'm celebrating my subdivision approval. I put that in when I was 35. <laughs> uh, it's now, he's now 42 years of age, had a bit of a heart problem at 41. It's now, and to make things worse, he's just got his approval in February this year because he had the further bad luck of uh, the, uh, the, the, the particular property going from Gold Coast Council to Logan Home. He's now away. But to wait for seven years is, a, is an absolute disgrace. So are you saying a cap on time approvals? Well, someone's got to check this out, and I think the councillors need more authority to pull those people up in the back rooms. Uh, we have some good, account, good councillors we've elected, but they've got their hands tied. It's an absolute disgrace. They, these people are here today, may the time and effort to come, should mm. go back and tap Ron on the shoulder and say, mate, uh, we've got to fix this forthwith. The time, you've got your infrastructure charges, You've got your time delay. What happens is a developer buys a block of land for $60,000, roughly $60,000 in infrastructure charges, late fees, and et cetera, et cetera. 60 plus 60 multiplied by two should be the average selling price for a block of land in this area. It's not happening because the time is too great. It needs to stop. All right. OK, Do Madonna, and in relation to the time frame, can I just say this because I mean, we're happy to take... You can throw all yeah. that you want to throw at us. But we have, we have a, a planning directorate where only last year or the year before it, we increased their staffing by some 25 people to deal with those processing of the people? application. But my point is there are elected representatives. And when, Bill, when there is a concern with a constituent, whether it's my area or any other area, they do come to the elected representatives and we do step in and we deal so with those issues on a case-by-case case if needed. All right, so can but I, I haven't ask... been hearing any of these in the last 12 months. Who I has, haven't... Can I just ask, who has gone to council over who has gone a to time council delay delay? or charges? No, Eddie, everybody passed the buck. I rang you one time about a hole in, 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 up near Nobby's Beach and you said to me, that's not my area, that's Bet's. Everyone's passing the buck, and it's, right. it's got to stop. OK. Uh, to uh, Warren briefly. Just a, a segue uh, from that comment to what I was going to raise. The, uh, and pity Andrew left was um, with the infrastructure charges cap that's on in place now, it's not retrospective to approvals that are currently in place. That would have been one of the most significant kickstarts to the industry if we could have got everyone with an approval right now to capitalise on that charge because the charges have been higher before, for example, the PIPs will bring those back. Uh,